upon the mercy seat. And then when he was through, verse 16, and he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgressions and all their sins, and so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remains among them in the midst of their uh, of their of, of their uh, of the congregation in the midst among them in the midst of their uncleanness. God, God is a peculiar God. Now He wasn't true. You would think now you have the picture of redemption, but the blood is what God wanted to cleanse man with. It took the blood of those animals to show the picture that his blood, his blood, there's nothing will wash you from sin but the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. There's nothing will take your sins away. I was praying last night with Sister Melissa here who shared with her lovely children today and, and she came to Christ last night Amen. and committed her life to God. Uh, all this family, Hold up your hand there, Melissa. Yes, All those you, little Jesus. girls were with her around the altar of prayer. The Lord. And she came to Christ last night yes. and surrendered her life. And, and the blood of Christ touched her. The blood of Christ cleansed her as it does you, as it does me, has me. There's nothing but the blood. There's power in the blood. Not the blood of the goat, natural. Not the blood of the bullet, natural, but you young men are cleansed. I'm cleansed. The prostitute that comes to God is cleansed. Uh, the liar is cleansed. The gambler is cleansed. Doesn't matter what they are, who they are. The fornicator is cleansed. The adulterer is cleansed by one and one only, the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Nothing but the blood. And he showed that that there had to be an animal with a rebellious nature and there had to be an animal with strength that would be slain to picture the Lamb of God who was both lamb and lion. Yes. Remember, the Lamb of God was also the lion of the tribe of Judah. He had the meekness of a lamb, but he had the roar of a lion. And that lamb, who was also a lion, had to go to the cross and there spill his blood. Uh, I want to. I want to get. Uh, there's so much in this. I could. I could spend a lot of time. Uh, but now, go from there over to the 21st verse, if you will, of the 16th chapter. I'm still there. Now here's another goat. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat. There were two goats. And confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat. But he doesn't slay this goat. After praying over this goat and anointing him, then he lets it go into the wilderness. And this goat flees into the wilderness, his life spared. Verse 22, and the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto a land not inhabited, and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness. Isn't God strange? I tell you right now, I wouldn't be surprised at God doing anything right now in the church to get their attention. Yes, amen. Because God has never let the church sleep too long. That's right, amen. God has never let the church backslide too long. He will change nations. He will change the economy. He will change conditions of society. He will change everything to get the attention of his people. Because in the end, he's going to have a, a redeemed church washed in the blood of the Lamb Praise the name of the Lord, a glorious church. And in the end, he's going to bring back miracles and signs and wonders right here in these latter days. 
in the last time, we're going to see joy again in the church like we've never seen it. We're going to see excitement in the church like we've never seen it. Praise the name of the Lord. I say God is getting ready to shift gears in the church of the living God right now. God is getting ready to do a great move in his people. Do not settle where you are in God right now, but you get ready for God to change everything there is about you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Can I say that again? Can I say that again? Praise the name of the Lord. Do not settle for where you are right now, but get ready for God to change everything there is about you. Because God is going to let the picture of redemption be fulfilled that he started back here in Leviticus. Now those goats, one free, one slave. Christ was a picture of both those goats. He was the goat that was slain, but he's also the goat that was freed. Because Christ, Christ did not stay in the grave. He didn't stay there. He arose. He's not, he's not in that grave. He's alive. He is now the live goat. Or he now is the live sacrifice. While there was one sacrifice that died, that died, there was another sacrifice that lived. Praise the name of the Lord. Can you see that? He was both of those sacrifices. He went and was killed and slayed for my sins. But he arose and fled. Praise the name of the Lord. As a goat, he was the scapegoat. He was the scapegoat, but he is the free goat. He was the one that took my sins, but he's the one that showed death could be overcome and he now lives praise the name of the lord that's why i feel like i do right now that's why i'm praising him right now that's why i'm alive and well right now that's why that i won't let religion i won't let men i won't let their judgments i won't let their ideas i won't let their opinions uh, cause me to not rejoice in my salvation because if christ is not real now he never was. If he's not a miracle worker now, he never has been. If Christ can't do it now, he couldn't do it then. If Christ is not able to take care of every sin that you've ever committed and free you from that sin, he never could. But he can, and he does, and that's why I'm praising him. Praise the name of the Lord. What a beautiful picture here. What a beautiful picture. But you know, I want to I put out one other thing. That in the book of Leviticus 17, let's leave that picture. And uh, I could dwell more on it. But in verse 11 of the 17th chapter, the scripture said, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. The blood that's in you is carnal and natural as it was in the Son of God and it had to be drained from his body. The blood that's in me has to be drained out of me. The carnal blood that I have, how many gallons, uh, you medical people could tell me, uh, that I'm carrying, uh, uh, but all the blood that's in me is the life of my flesh. If you would take this blood out of me, I would have no life in the flesh. I said the flesh. See, Leviticus said the life of the flesh is in the blood. Uh, not, not the spirit, but the life of the flesh is in the blood. All, the, all of my DNA, all of my life is in the blood, chemistry. You can find out anything you want to know about me by my blood. They, have, they can identify you, they can cross-section you, they can tell everything that's happening to you by a simple drawing of your blood. life's blood. Just get it out of there, put it under a microscope, and it will tell them whether you're healthy, 
whether you're well. It'll tell them your age. It will tell them all about you, everything there is. It'll identify you because the life of the flesh is in the blood. That's the natural man. That's the, that's the carnal self. That had to be drained out of Christ. In Israel, you could not uh, take and uh, eat a beast. Go down to verse uh, 13 now. I'm, I'm, I'm going to finish Leviticus 17 here in a moment. But go down to verse 13. And whatsoever that man, now remember 11 said, the life of the flesh is in the blood. But verse 13 said, and whatsoever man there be of the children of Israel or of the strangers, that was the Gentiles, who had been taken in by Israel, who sojourn among you, which hunts and catches any beast or fowl that may be eaten, he shall even pour out the blood thereof and cover it with dust. What a picture. For it is the life of all flesh. The blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, <clears throat> you shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh. For the life of all flesh is in the blood thereof. Whosoever eats it shall be cut off. What a strange law unless you understand the picture of redemption. Israel could not eat a strangled animal. Israel could not eat a hunter's bounty that he did not drain the blood completely out of that animal, completely out of that fowl. If they did, they were cut off. God would judge them. They were under judgment. If they ate of any beast or fowl, that had blood still in the body. Men kill deers today, and they the blood is still in that deer. They kill different animals, the blood is still in that animal. Uh, you couldn't eat that in Israel. Now that would cut you off, because the life of the old flesh is in the blood. It had to be drained, immediately gotten out of there. No blood in that carcass, none, none whatsoever. Because God demanded that if you did, you would be cut off. Because God said, you eat blood, you're defiled. They could not eat blood. They could not eat animals that had blood remaining in their body. Because the life of the flesh is in the blood. Your life, your carnal life, who you are, what you are, your temper, your temperament, the way you think, the way you feel, what drives you to steal, what drives you to lie, what drives you to not lie, not steal, what drives you to be jealous, what drives you to be angry, is all in the life that you carry and the DNA in the blood. That makes you the person. That has to be taken from me as I journey with Christ because I cannot offer my body a living sacrifice if I have that blood in me it can't be a living sacrifice and accepted of God, Romans 12, because I must, this is where, this is where uh, discipleship comes in. See, this, this is where really the rubber meets the road because the church is really not facing this issue head on right now. They, they are hoping that they can somehow get around offering their body a living sacrifice, giving their all, everything they have. Surrendering themselves completely to discipleship, to be a child of God, to be a Christian. You can't retain any of that blood and be a sacrifice accepted of God. I'm talking about life. The life of the flesh is in the blood because that's where discipleship comes in. That's where being a Christian, Christ-like, comes in. That's where complete surrender comes in. And that's not really a popular area. It's not... It doesn't bring even a lot of, uh, you know, good sounding uh, tones to it. When you begin to talk about offering yourself up completely, questioning God, is it your will before I go there, do that, buy that, possess that, have that, live there, 
That, that's not a popular area. But see, the life that I have in me, in the natural, self-life, that, that must be drained from me, for me to be a sacrifice. Well, how am I going to live then? How can I be a living sacrifice? I'd be dead. In the natural, you would be. In the natural, you will be. If you lose all that blood that's in you as a person, you're going to be dead because the life of your flesh is in the blood. But if you're living by another life that deals with your inner man, as the natural blood deals with your outer man, but if you have another life in you, through another blood in you, see, I'm not talking about your natural blood now. I'm talking about the blood that you receive through the gift of Christ, through the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's what I was wondering. I'm talking about the blood that you receive through the Holy Ghost. You know where Christ's blood comes into you, lives in you, can be identified in you? And did you know God can put you under the microscope and identify you just like a, a doctor can the natural self? God can put you under this microscope and he knows all about your DNA, your spiritual DNA. Because you have a spiritual DNA. When Christ came in your life, you had another life, or should have. If, it, if, that, if that didn't happen, Christ didn't come in you. But if Christ came in you, your whole world changed the very moment. You said, I surrender. I give myself to God. I am yours, Lord. All of your, all of your, all of your body surrendered itself. And there was another blood that came into you, the blood of Jesus Christ. We're, we're, we're saved by faith. We're justified by faith. But life comes, the quickening comes through the Holy Ghost coming into us. Praise the name of the Lord. And when that Holy Ghost comes in, when the Holy Life comes in, it should visibly, it should change me. Yes. That's why when people tell me, the Holy Ghost is in me, I'm living for Christ, I'm living for God, they've got five filthy habits in their life, I know better than that. Yes. Yes. They're telling themselves a lie, and they're telling <laughs> God a lie. Yes. Because you can't live with five filthy habits in your life and have the holy life of God in you. It will wash you and cleanse you, and it will deal with you, and it will help you and you will overcome those over a period of time. You will subdue them over a period of time. Uh, how many really believe that Christ really affects you when he comes in? Amen. Do you believe that the Holy Ghost yes. affects you? Yes. Yeah, I'm not preaching to a congregation that believes that. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. How many believe you're a new creation Amen. when you come into Christ? Amen. And Christ comes into you. Yes. Amen. Amen. If any man be in Christ, and if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Amen. Brother Marlo, I can't, I, I can't have that. I just can't have all that you're describing. You can if you're in Christ. You can if you let the blood of Christ flow through you. And you got to get a, a draining out. That's why Jesus said no man can put new wine into old bottles. That's right, isn't it? No man can put new wine in an old bottle. So what do you got to get? You've got to get a new bottle. You'd better be a new bottle when Christ comes in. Because he's going to put new wine in that new bottle. But if you're an old bottle, you'll have a problem. Something will break. The flesh will break. The wine skin will dry up. And you'll, you'll, not, uh, you'll not reflect a new creation. But uh, no man put up an old, a uh, new patch on an old garment because if he does the rent is going to be made worse and here you come down the street with a great big patch <laughs> on an old garment you didn't get a new garment you got a patch on a new garment on an old garment that that's what happens when a person doesn't surrender to christ and say lord come in you're greater than i am take yes. over yes. lord let your holy spirit Amen. You know what I do? I do some spiritual calisthenics. Every now and then I just say, praise the Lord. Amen. What happens to me if I don't? My body gets old. My body gets tired. I, I, I feel like I'm bored or dull or dull of hearing. 
Every now and then I say, praise the Lord. Every now and then I say, glory to God. Every now and then I just say, Lord, pump me up. Praise the name of the Lord. Because if you're in me, I want you to speak up. I want you to speak out. Because if Christ be in you, you've got a new creation. You've got a new DNA. You've got a new life in you. Praise the name of the Lord. It's real. Would you say it's real with me? It's real. Praise God. All doubts are settled. And I know. I know it's real. See, this is a picture here. Uh, they couldn't eat an animal that the blood had not been drained out of. And so, th now this is why, and I'm going to, uh, I saw a hand or two up, I'll, I'll come back and get that. But in, uh, this is why in the book of Acts, that they could not, they could not, in the book of Acts, uh, the 15th chapter, they could not eat anything <clears throat> that was strangled. And that was the reason, because the blood of that animal was still in that animal. And they could not eat any of the old life of that animal. So that was what the Gentiles did. Um, and here in Acts uh, 15 and 22, verse 22, the decision of the apostles at the council in Jerusalem where the Jews and the Gentiles came into fellowship after Christ broke down the middle wall of partition, he said in uh, verse 22, then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. And then going down, um, uh, let me see what verse I want to uh, save uh, reading uh, so very much. Um, yes, verse 29. Uh, verse 28. For it seemed good, verse 28, to the Holy Spirit and to us uh, to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. That you abstain from meats offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication, from which it may keep, uh, from which if you keep yourselves, you shall do well, fare you well. They could not eat of those things that were polluted, that were offered to the idols. They couldn't eat anything strangled because the blood was still in that. One other picture I want to show you, then I'll, I'll break uh, time here for somebody to run a question by me if, they're, if they um, are questioning something I've said or commenting. Jesus on the cross did not go to the tomb with Mary's blood in him. That's why he's my sacrifice. That's why I can eat of that bread. That's right. The living bread, yes. living bread. and never die. That's right. Amen. The Bible said they pierced his side. And every bit of blood and water came out of his body. Why? Because he could not go to the tomb. If you get this, you'll probably want to shout, whether you do or not. Yes. <laughs> He could not go to the tomb as the son of Mary. All his DNA was lost. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. John 19, 34. Came there out blood and water. Every bit of blood Every bit of the DNA yes. <coughs> of that Jewish woman called Mary Amen. went out of his body, down into the ground, yes. spilled into the soil yes. for the redemption yes. of the earth 
because he could not go into that tomb with one bit of the blood of that natural woman because he was not the son of Mary when he came from that tomb. He was and is the son of God. Amen.